Prabhupada will say you got to say Kabir, Abu Sa'ada, Amir Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa ahlan wa sahlan bikum fi makhraj wa khatim nizar al amal al salih. humanitarian studies. My name is Sultan Barakat. I'm the founding director of the Center for Conflict and Humanitarian Studies. At the outset, I'd like to extend my gratitude to you for joining us uh, in light of the extraordinary circumstances that our world is uh, living through, especially as far as the pandemic is concerned. I am, it gives me great pleasure to welcome a diplomat, a towering personality in this uh, lecture to document uh, the uh, Qatari experience uh, in the mediation efforts. Uh, this will be the first uh, lecture and we shall be meeting different uh, personalities uh, from the Qatari side. I uh, would like to welcome uh, Mr. Nasser, Abdelaziz uh, al Nasser. Uh, uh, one of the most important uh, personalities uh, in the diplomatic memory of Doha. He has uh, joined uh, in 1972 the foreign ministry and uh, he became an ambassador in a number of uh, countries uh, to the tune of 23, Jordan, Lebanon, Canada, Canada, Argentina and others. Uh, his uh, diplomatic experience uh, has allowed him to become uh, the state of Qatar's uh, permanent representative uh, at the UN since uh, 1998 uh, up until 2011. And during uh, that period, he headed the Security Council when Qatar in 2016 became the non-permanent member. And indeed, uh, he also became the deputy president uh, of uh, the Onga in 2002-2004 in the 57th session and he headed the General Assembly in 2011-2012 in its 66th session. His Excellency Nasser Abdelaziz al Nasser had headed the 77 group and China in 2004 in New York and uh, he paved the way for the uh, summit uh, of the South that has been held in Qatar in 2005. Uh, this had shed light on Qatar and its role uh, internationally, especially as far as its relationship uh, with the southern countries as well as the West. Indeed, uh, he has been uh, working relentlessly and uh, between 2007 2009 he headed uh, the high profile committee of the southern countries uh, of the General Assembly in 2009-2010. Uh, he also headed uh, the Committee of Political Accountability and the fourth uh, uh, Committee of the General Assembly. He also represented uh, the state of Qatar in a number of uh, regional and local conferences. Uh, and he played uh, a major role in the mediation efforts uh, as well as the cooperation between the uh, countries of the south. Uh, he had uh, uh, become a minister in 2011 and uh, his role has culminated uh, in becoming uh, the uh, high uh, representative of the United Nations uh, in uh, uh, up until 2019 uh, for the uh, uh, Civilizations Alliance uh, and uh, indeed uh, this uh, organization has played a major role in combating extremism as well as different phobias, uh, the hatred culture, and uh, uh, called upon uh, all countries to build bridges and uh, to acknowledge uh, the diversity. He had received eight uh, honorary doctorates uh, from different uh, prominent uh, universities, uh, including Fordham in the United States of America, and an honorary uh, doctorate uh, from uh, the uh, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences uh, in 2009, he has become a fellow at uh, the uh, uh, New York uh, External uh, uh, Policies uh, Syndicate. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, uh, he has uh, uh, received uh, 
a number of accolades uh, and uh, uh, the list uh, goes on <laughs> otherwise I'll be the lecturer if I carried on talking uh, from different countries he had received uh, the uh, 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 accolade uh, of independence from Jordan uh, uh, because I have to be biased when it comes to Jordan uh, anyway we are uh, receiving uh, uh, a diplomat uh, who had an experience that stretched over 50 years uh, on a different uh, levels uh, in different dimensions and uh, he uh, 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 has an experience in uh, settling uh, crises uh, especially when uh, the uh, second half of the last uh, uh, century and the beginning of this century have been uh, tumultuous um, and he called for the reform of the United Nations as well to meet uh, the uh, Greek uh, challenges in our uh, developing uh, world um, and uh, uh, His Excellency had uh, put into place uh, a political vision, a policy related vision to reform the uh, United Nations and he, uh, he included this vision in uh, 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 this book uh, entitled uh, A Year at the Helm of the United Nations in Mediation and Peace Building at the University Press of New York has published uh, this book in 2014 and uh, he reflected his experience uh, uh, working with the United Nations. Uh, I uh, uh, call upon you to read this book ladies and gentlemen because uh, uh, it is rich of uh, lessons uh, and uh, unfortunately we have only few diplomats uh, who uh, 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 held uh, uh, important uh, uh, posts uh, and uh, written their experience experiences in books his excellency will be uh, uh, talking to us uh, uh, he, he will have a lecture entitled uh, a year at the helm of the United Nations in mediation and uh, peace building. Please uh, have an applaud and uh, welcome His uh, Excellency Nasser Abdelaziz Al Nasser. In the name of God, the most gracious, uh, the most, the most merciful, peace be upon you, Allah's blessings and His uh, uh, mercy, Your uh, uh, Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, guests, uh, it gives me a great pleasure to be amongst you today uh, at this evening in this lecture organized by the Center for Conflict and Humanitarian Studies, uh, this uh, independent institution that is able to generate uh, specialized uh, knowledge uh, and uh, generate uh, the best practices in the domain of uh, humanitarian aid and conflict resolutions uh, indeed it has uh, kept abreast uh, with uh, the other think tanks uh, in the developed world through aligning the theoretical studies uh, the political dimensions and the practical expertise in the Arab world uh, that uh, has been affecting and affected uh, by what goes on in the world. The Arab world uh, must uh, uh, participate in building uh, knowledge uh, across the world. At the outset, uh, I'd like uh, to thank uh, my brother, Professor Sultan Barakat, uh, the director of the center, and uh, all those in charge uh, of uh, receiving us uh, at this center to deliver a lecture entitled a year at the helm of the United Nations in mediation and peace building and I wish uh, them every single success your excellencies uh, ladies uh, and gentlemen dear guests uh, the world uh, has uh, went through bloody wars and uh, fearsome conflicts uh, for centuries uh, And this uh, has affected uh, negatively the integration of the peoples. Uh, this had led to the establishment of the League of Nations uh, in 1919, following the First World War. 
in line with the Versailles uh, Treaty for boosting uh, international cooperation and achieving peace and security. And despite uh, some earlier successes, the League of the Nation was not able to prevent uh, the Second World War. And on the 20th of April in 1946, uh, the League of the Nations uh, disappeared when the United Nations International Organization has uh, took its place. Uh, the United Nations, uh, since its inception, worked on achieving the noble goals uh, and uh, the upholding of uh, the objectives and the values and the principles. The United Nations, since its inception, has worked on uh, the preservation of uh, peace and security and boosting the international cooperation between the nations uh, on the basis of uh, equality in rights uh, between the peoples and the right uh, to self-determination as well as uh, achieving the international cooperation to solve uh, the socio-economic, cultural, humanitarian, international issues and uh, boosting and promoting uh, human rights and the fundamental freedoms for everyone without uh, discrimination on the basis of uh, race, language or religion. And in accordance with this noble objectives, uh, the United Nations uh, aims at uh, achieving peace and security through uh, salvaging the uh, future generations from the woes of war. Indeed, one generation has witnessed uh, twice two world wars. The United Nations uh, promotes uh, security and peace, uh, dignity and prosperity for all. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, your excellencies, uh, dear uh, uh, guests, uh, it gives me a great honor to have been entrusted by uh, His Highness the Father Emir and uh, the Emir of uh, the State of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad, to represent the State of Qatar during my diplomatic career, which uh, has stretched uh, over years uh, with different uh, milestones, uh, struggles uh, during the bilateral relationships uh, as well as the multilateral ones. Uh, the uh, uh, United Nations milestone uh, represented a watershed moment uh, uh, in my life uh, as I had worked uh, as the permanent representative of Qatar at the United Nations and the deputy of the president of Onga in the 57th session and later I headed a number of groups and committees, uh, as well as uh, the Security Council when Qatar became a non-permanent member. Uh, at the time, Qatar played an effective role uh, in addressing a number of regional and international uh, uh, issues uh, in settling crisis, uh, promoting security and peace, uh, finding solutions and dealing with uh, political and military uh, issues, especially in Sudan, uh, in the Darfur region, in Yemen, Lebanon, as well as in Asia and Africa. Indeed, uh, the blessing and the trust uh, I had uh, been equipped with uh, in 2010 by uh, the Emir was an important uh, milestone uh, in my life as I uh, was pushed uh, to become the president of the General Assembly. And indeed, uh, this was uh, a historic uh, moment uh, as I have held uh, the highest uh, post uh, at that uh, august body. Indeed, uh, it has been an honor and it has been also a huge responsibility in, on my shoulders. Uh, I wanted to be the example of the policy of uh, Qatar to achieve uh, the noble objectives of the United Nations. Since I was elected to head the General Assembly, I had uh, uh, encountered a number of challenges. Uh, the world has, has gone through extraordinary circumstances that affected uh, the stability in a number of countries, especially in the Arab world, which had witnessed the so-called uh, Arab Spring or the Arab Uprising. And I have uh, worked uh, uh, through that session on a number of uh, regional and international 
uh, issues that uh, uh, the uh, General Assembly deals with uh, uh, in accordance with Chapter 6 uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the Charter of the United uh, Nations. I have resorted to the mediation tool as the optimal tool to settle crises, uh, especially when the economic and social and cultural uh, situation uh, have been dired, uh, believing that uh, the foreign policy of Qatar has uh, been based on preventive diplomacy and soft uh, power. In my work, uh, I have uh, relied, uh, have relied on, I have relied on four, on four uh, uh, pillars. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, peaceful settlement uh, of conflicts uh, has uh, constituted the first pillar. The General Assembly provided me with uh, opportunities for deliberations and indeed uh, mediation efforts. Uh, the uh, special discussions on mediation took place in July, September and September in 2011. Uh, we had held a number of meetings, uh, symposia, during that year, all across uh, the uh, United Nations organs and outside uh, the vicinity of the state, uh, of the city of New York. The second uh, uh, pillar was to do with the reform of the United Nations, uh, uh, which uh, uh, incorporates uh, its adaptation with uh, uh, the new development in the of the 21st century in order to meet uh, the objectives of the United Nations. Uh, uh, I was the head of the General Assembly, so I uh, uh, worked relentlessly through two ambassadors who uh, represented the Western uh, uh, part and the Asian African uh, part of the United Nations aiming at uh, activating the General Assembly to uh, reach consensus between the members. Uh, the task force uh, uh, that was mandated to do so uh, played a major role in uh, launching discussions and deliberations uh, following uh, uh, consensus on the importance of uh, uh, having the General Assembly robust uh, uh, lively and reformed, uh, and uh, at that session we had focused on the dire need to have a balanced uh, approach uh, to deal with this uh, issue, taking into consideration the implementation of the GA's resolutions uh, and other initiatives uh, to build capacities. Uh, these uh, efforts uh, culminated in a resolution to have the General Assembly more robust and asking the general the general secretary to allocate uh, a budget uh, in order for the resolution to be implemented in 2014 and 2015 the third uh, pillar focused uh, on uh, the prevention efforts uh, and uh, the prevention the prevention approach uh, as far as crises are concerned uh, indeed uh, natural uh, disasters uh, are with us uh, especially uh, climate change, uh, we, which uh, uh, has developed uh, negatively, and this has pushed uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the globe uh, to work less with fossil fuel and coal, and to resort to renewable energy and clean ones uh, in order to stave off uh, uh, global warming. We have seen efforts, uh, however, deforestation is still with us. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, level of uh, seawater is rising and uh, other climate related uh, disasters are still with us uh, the fourth uh, uh, pillar the fourth pillar has relied on sustainable development and uh, a global prosperity the international community renewed its political will and its commitment uh, to address uh, the economic and social and environmental challenges uh, and uh, in accordance uh, maria luisa her excellency has been uh, appointed by me and she was the ambassador of uh, brazil to uh, form a task force in order to meet uh, this uh, fourth pillar. 
In light uh, of uh, that, uh, I had held uh, an international conference uh, to address uh, the financial and the economic uh, 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 system. The IMF has participated uh, in that conference as well as uh, different uh, personalities to uh, submit recommendations to the United Nations to take the necessary steps. And uh, my focus was on uh, enhancing the international economy, emanating from my belief that the uh, General Assembly has a central role to play in uh, international and global governance. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished gathering, on this occasion I would like to allude to other uh, accomplishments that uh, the 66 General Assembly managed to achieve under my leadership. Under my presidency, the General Assembly took an historic decision when the accreditation of the real representatives of the Libyan people were accepted. I helped the Libyan people uh, with whom I visited, uh, accompanied by the Secretary General in 2011. The committee to accept the accreditations of the representatives of countries comes under the powers and the competencies of the president in the days of uh, Colonel Gaddafi, these representatives were not allowed to uh, enter the United States, and the Libyan delegation at the United Nations, Nations saw uh, a rift and dissidents. Uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman Al Shukub, who was formerly the foreign minister and the Libyan representative before he joined the opposition. He approached me to uh, intercede on his behalf. There are, of course, there's a committee made up of 15 members, including the five permanent uh, members. I called for an unofficial meeting in order to reach a decision whereby we can uh, cancel the accreditation of the Libyan delegation and in their stead accept the accreditation of the opposition whereby Mr. Abdul Rahman al Shukum and uh, his colleagues became the legitimate representatives of Libya and the United Nations. As for Syria, and in line with the responsibility of the international uh, organization in uh, supporting the peace and stability in the world, the General Assembly in 2011, uh, we have adopted a resolution which condemned the violations, the blatant violations by the Syrian regime of uh, 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 international laws and uh, uh, human rights against uh, the systemized violations against uh, of human rights against the Syrian people. And Ban Ki-moon, the former Secretary General, appointed a international personality as a special envoy, and the late Kofi Annan the former uh, Secretary General was chosen for this mission. I also felt there was, uh, after intense uh, discussions uh, undertaken by the working groups, we have noticed uh, noticeable progress. I've also paid special attention to the dialogue of intercivilizational dialogue 
this emanated from my firm belief in the necessity of avoiding any armed conflicts and I have made a visit to Somalia with Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General, to discuss the affairs of this uh, Arab country and shed light to its difficulties and hardships, especially the economic, political, and others, and in order to promote a culture of peace and sustainable development, which uh, could enable this uh, Somali uh, society to really do something about the dire conditions that the people of Somalia used to go through, especially that Somalia was rather neglected by the Arab countries and the international community. Uh, the issue of Somalia was rather sensitive When Qatar was uh, elected for the membership of the Security Council and we considered the issues uh, on the table, the issues before the Security Council, after all the Security Council is in charge of international peace and stability and security, we did not find any mention of Somalia uh, in the agenda of the, the Security Council, although at that time Somalia was divided and the security and economic situation was really bad. And on top of all of that, there was no government to establish law and order. And as a result of that, uh, various uh, terrorist groups uh, uh, appeared and they started uh, uh, engaging in acts of piracy against commercial shipping on the routes to Asia and the Red Sea. Uh, these acts of piracy became very well known at the time, so much so that uh, uh, the major powers in the world, on the world uh, agreed on the necessity of protecting their uh, commercial shipping and uh, a lot of money was allocated. I'm of the opinion that a fraction of this uh, amount of money could have been spent uh, internally in Somalia to restore some sort of normality to that country and the question, the problems of terrorism and turmoil and consequently uh, piracy could have all gotten rid of. But when we saw all these uh, naval ships and flotillas and everywhere guarding commercial shipping, anyway, that was a huge expense. Although I'm departing from my text now a little bit because there are things I need to, I need to mention now. Uh, myself and uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, he was the Secretary General, when I raised this question with him, the question of Somalia was not through the General Assembly, but this was done when we became members of the Security Council and we received an invitation to visit Washington. It is customary that any friendly country any friendly country of the United States of America, when elected to the membership of the Security Council, would be invited to Washington. I went to the State Department and we discussed uh, all issues at hand. And Qatar has to be flexible, of course, uh, especially when it comes to uh, certain countries. By and large, the conversation was positive, but uh, ultimately, we made one demand and we said when we looked at the agenda of the Security Council, we didn't see Somalia appearing on it. Somalia is a, a brotherly Arab country and unfortunately has been neglected for a long time and we represent the Arab world or the Arabian 
Arab group, and uh, we, of course, naturally focus on issues concerning the Arab world. We were told that uh, the question of Somalia is postponed for the time being. We said to them, Somalia is a brotherly country, and it's our responsibility to look after any Arab country which faces huge problems like the like Somalia. So uh, our proposal was accepted, and Somalia was added to the agenda of the Security Council. When we came to the Security Council, whereby we see new committees are formed, whether from Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa, and in questions pertaining to terrorism, conflict, we were pushing towards us getting the presidency of the Committee on Somalia. And according to the alphabetical order, the ambassador representing the Peru was sitting next to me, who was an artist. He really, and uh, Mr. Boeid with me, we were, we were at the same time at the council. I was rather surprised that the presidency was with the UK. They gave the presidency of the committee on Somal to Piro, and I was given the uh, the presidency of uh, Liberia, the Liberian Committee. When we inquired why, they said the big five, the permanent five, said this was their agreement. I said to them, Somalia is our concern. It's an Arab country. They told us we have taken our decision. The ambassador of Piro sitting next to me was a man who loved music. He was an artist. He, had nothing to do with politics. I don't know, he was, he had some sort of a relationship with the president. He didn't even know what was going on. I said to him, you just, have you heard what they said? He said, no, I did not understand. I said, you've been appointed head of the Somalia committee. You are a man who loves uh, having fun in life, music. When, when, <laughs> When you go there, the Shabab and others will give you a rough time. I said to him, I'm asking you to give up your position, take Liberia from me and give me. So he raised his hand. He said, no, I, I'm from Latin America. I had nothing to do with Somalia. Liberia, there is some uh, dispute over smuggling, diamonds, etc. But uh, the decision was already taken. So I took the presidency of the Somali committee for one year. We used to find that we used to push, in fact, for more attention to the affairs of Somalia. Of course, next year they took it from me. They gave it to South Africa. South Africa is a big country is very influential in Africa. We could not do anything about that decision, but we, we, our contribution was mainly in the first year. Anyway, going back to the General Assembly, I presented the, the situation to Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General. He said to me, let's postpone this. He said, that area is not secure. I said to him, I, I approached you as a colleague and for the General Assembly, the cooperation of the Secretary General is important. If we go together, it's much better. If you go on your own or I go, I said, I'm offering you the opportunity. Uh, in I said, if you don't go, if the president of the General Assembly goes to Somalia and you stay in New York, he felt rather embarrassed. He said, how can we go to Somalia? There is no flights or anything. I sent an official letter to his, 
His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Qatar, through Mr. Abdullah, they decided to send us uh, a private jet, and I think at that time a, seven three, a Boeing 737 was uh, allocated for this task. I came to Doha first, then we went to Kenya because Ban Ki-moon was visiting Kenya and he was on a visit, and together we'll go to Makadisho in Somalia. Of course, the Kenyan officials, the foreign ministry, uh, received me first, then Ban Ki-moon arrived later. We were having dinner at around 11 o'clock. Our flight was supposed to take off around 5.30 in the morning, following morning, I saw Ban Ki-moon came with uh, the head of security of the UN. He came to me. He sat down. He said, what's happening? When have you arrived? Uh, I s he said to me, if you don't mind, uh, the head of security wants to deliver some news to you. I said to him, please go ahead. He said, we just received news. I think he said it was from Djibouti, from the American base there, that they uh, intercepted communications for the Shabab organization. They are going to shoot down our aircraft. And he said to me, also, the runway at Makadisho Airport is very short. It's, it cannot, uh, a, a, a Boeing 737 will be easily shot down because we cannot maneuver, especially when it comes to landing. I uh, said, we, w please, I'm asking you to cancel our trip. I said, how can we do? Uh, he said to me, both our lives are at risk. Maybe we can come another time because they received this news on Sunday. Uh, the, our, our arrival was to be announced upon our arrival. Maybe somehow they got the news and uh, uh, he said to me, did you hear what I said? I said to him, yes. I said to him, my dear colleague, we are here to help these people. If people find out that we canceled our flight what credibility will the UN have, you have, or I have? People are eagerly awaiting us. If they find out uh, that uh, we canceled for simple fears for our lives, I said to them, there are alternatives. I said to him, I agree with you. When a big aircraft tries to land, it's, it can be targeted easily. Uh, we f can find an alternative flight. He said, no, we cancel. I said, well, if you don't want to go, I would go on my go. After certain contacts, uh, he said to me, he said, okay, we must go early uh, to precede any attempt by anybody who wants to commit an aggression against us. I said, well, I don't mind if you want to leave now. They they chartered a small uh, beach craft company. It has a, it's like a little bird. It doesn't need a long uh, runway. Uh, uh, it's, uh, we after two after two two <laughs> hours we landed on the sea surface, uh, and I used to see if it was like. A, a meter below the aircraft. And then, of course, we we were received as if we were going to into battle. If anybody who saw the the film about Black Black Hawk Down when the Americans lost a, a helicopter and people, with, they put us in armored personnel carriers and they put bulletproof vests on us. I was looking through the window of the armored car that uh, there was destruction everywhere. We got to the president's house. 
was a villa, and we hold, we held a meeting. Then we visited the UN centers, and we went to the biggest uh, area where uh, internally displaced people and uh, refugees on the Kenyan Somali borders, where some 600,000 people were living in diet. Uh, it could bring tears into your eyes. We spent about four or five hours with them listening to their plight. After that, we returned to New York and we proposed uh, a resolution which was adopted. And then after that, things started moving in the right direction. And thank heavens, even th the current situation in Somalia is better even though they have still problems, they have a running government, they have an army, they have diplomatic missions. This was one of the things. Uh, uh, towards the end of my tenure, I proposed uh, a draft resolution, which is known today as the Happiness Day. And that. Uh, uh, the world uh, is used to going through hardship and difficulty. We adopted the resolution to have an international day of happiness. I proposed another draft resolution, which the General Assembly used to celebrate Father's Day and Mother's Day. I said, why are you separating between fathers and mothers, I propose to have uh, to have an international day for parents. Some European countries objected for reasons uh, w because when you speak about father and mother as parents, there are people in the gay community who see things differently, you must include that. I said we're talking about uh, mo parents, mothers and fathers. We have nothing to do with any other thing. Just because uh, the celebration was of mothers and fathers uh, separately, we wanted to combine the two in one celebration. This was uh, probably the last uh, job I did, I did before I finished my tenure. And now I'll leave it here and give the floor back to Dr. Sultan Barakat, and I'm ready to respond to your comments and questions. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for being with us and sharing with us these experiences. They are, in fact, uh, very important because it uh, comes from a country like Qatar and s a country that served the level of the United Nations. I want to start with the question of reform. Uh, every Secretary General comes to the UN, starts talking about uh, reform, and after three, four years, they finished their tenure, nothing happened, like Guterres. Now, is there, in your opinion, uh, real intention of, uh, of uh, doing something at the executive level of the UN organizations, the different departments? Uh, what we usually see is they they leave the real issues like bias against certain cultures, for example, this plays a leading role. They allow certain positions to certain countries. I mean, they get involved in issues pertaining to salaries and things like that without really focusing on real reform. Thank you very much. An important... Uh, Question. I was going to mention it even if you haven't uh, brought it up. Uh, and frankly speaking, and without any biases whatsoever from a very neutral position, I would 
I was a permanent representative. I was assistant to the representative. I was president of the deputy president at, uh, and other positions. The, qu the question of reform is uh, being raised and discussed for over 25 years. In the United Nations, there are certain groups amongst the member states who are calling for reform. Some have strong demands, some see things differently, and they want to see consensus and the different positions. Unfortunately, since the establishment of the United Nations in 1945, those who uh, designed the UN Charter were the countries who came out victorious in the war. And this uh, uh, I mean, countries like uh, the United States, Russia, it was the Soviet Union, then the UK and France, then China joined later. And of course, they had the power of uh, veto. Uh, there were uh, 193, I think, member states, and this number is likely to increase. So therefore, um, they sort of uh, designed this outfit according to their own measurements. Uh, people were coming out of a major world war and conflict. People were looking to peace and stability. The world became bigger and the members increased. The, wo the UN remained as it was. In 1945, their members were 60 countries. The Security Council was made up of 15 members, five permanent uh, members with the power of veto, the other 10 nothing. Their voting would not make an iota of difference one way or another because all what it takes to have one vote against uh, as a veto to, to change everything. Germany was a defeated country now be became the most important country to have a permanent seat. Europe has two permanent member seats. Uh, Latin America has none, Africa has none. Asia, apart from uh, China, yeah, Japan is calling for membership. The Arab world has no membership. And frankly speaking, we used to attend meetings Oh, and uh, the problem is not uh, a problem of reform. The problem lies in how to open up the Charter, the UN Charter itself. The five permanent members, they do not want anyone to change this Charter because once that happens, then there's no ending to that. Uh, and. Uh, I said in the beginning we did what we could. We were members of the United for Consensus group. Uh, then it seems that uh, we had four or five African countries who want permanent membership. Europe, apart from the UK and France, Germany and Italy, was Latin America, Brazil, uh, uh, the other, the rest of the Latin American countries say Brazil speaks Portuguese. We are other. We have other big countries uh, speak uh, Spanish. So five permanent members were sitting there smiling without saying anything. We every time we ask them, they said to us, "You agree amongst yourselves, then come to us." Of course, they knew no way all these countries will manage a united position. If Africans alone have five countries who want membership, the Arab world is completely marginalized. 
Unfortunately, after all the meetings, all the efforts exerted, I, as the president of the General Assembly, I had all the powers. The Secretary General has no powers because he is just an employee of the General Assembly. He wanted to uh, gather together uh, enough opinions to reach uh, a draft on the reform of the UN. We used to hear a lot. Everybody was calling for reform, the UN, the Security Council, different countries. Unbelievable. This organization is not currently suitable for the world uh, situation. Look at the Ukrainian question, for example. People are lying, uh, facing a very dangerous situation. If God forbid we have a war, where is, where is the United Nations in all of this? The Security Council cannot take any decisions because there is a Russian veto and the Chinese veto. So the Americans and the West are hopeless. They cannot do anything. Well, it's the responsibility of the, of the Security Council to protect the peace under uh, Chapter 7. Putris Ghali, when he was uh, General Secretary, he, had, he did two things. He differed on other things. Some big countries did, were not happy with him. They did not renew uh, for his uh, uh, position again. But but he got 14 votes, but only one vote destroyed his chances of being nominated again. He did two or maybe one important thing, and that is preventive diplomacy. All of this came from Putras uh, Ghali. He said we have to have a policy of prevention. And uh, uh, big countries were angered when he said that the peace process is meaningless. Ev because even if there is war, uh, they cannot do anything because uh, they are on the s side of peacekeeping. He said, so we should establish a UN army, all the big ones, jumped and said, you do not ever again mention this thing. Who do you think you are? This is one thing. The other thing is the question of the power of veto. If the United Nations uh, wanted to do something, that, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it should be run by the member states. They can run it, but if they differed amongst themselves, even with the question of the corona pandemic, the question of the Ukraine, the question of Africa, which is neglected, marginalized, the only solution, the charter itself should be amended, changed, and doing that uh, now is impossible. So by the will of God, I hope it will not happen, but the only solution is if the world uh, gets into another thir a third world war, and this organization collapsed and a new one was established, then that one should be established on foundations different than the current one because uh, countries with the power of veto, they of course will never admit to this publicly. They say, you agree and come to us. Uh, so if we are to agree, then we have to, uh, to uh, we have to think of restructuring, reform. The, fir the first way to activate the Security Council to cancel the power of veto. Uh, nobody, w when, when you has the absolute power, is not going to give that because their power uh, uh, resides in that. Now, 
And now that uh, the UK, after Brexit, has left Europe, then the, U the US will never agree to that. Your Excellency, you mentioned the question of uh, Libya. The intervention in uh, Libya was uh, preventive so that uh, massacres uh, won't be committed. Uh, and, uh, the responsibility to protect uh, was the norm, was the principle. Uh, when you look back uh, 10 years ago, do you think that uh, the intervention was uh, somewhat uh, wrong or has the decision taken in a rush or in a hurry or do you think that uh, things uh, would have been uh, better had the intervention had been differently or do you think that uh, the uh, decision was 100% uh, uh, correct the uh, Arab Spring came along swiftly and disappeared swiftly because of uh, the intervention of certain countries, international intervention. And those uh, who were behind the revolution to change their own countries Unfortunately, some of the organizations uh, gained support from external powers uh, later on, and they became kind of parties, uh, fighting, infighting parties. And uh, you remind me of uh, the following. The United Nations, uh, we look at it uh, as uh, being the ICC, the uh, Security Council, the General Assembly, and so on and so forth. However, the regional organizations ought to shoulder the brunt of uh, the responsibility. We have in the Arab world uh, the Arab League, and uh, it has uh, been established uh, at the same time when the United Nations had been established. Uh, there's also the ASEAN in Asia, there is uh, the African Union in Africa, we have the GCC in the Gulf. The objective of uh, establishing such organizations is to help to promote uh, stability, achieve peace, uh, and uh, boost the unity, and uh, benefit from um, expertise in development, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the overarching goal is to achieve stability, peace, and security in the Arab world. Uh, the, A the EU, the European Union, uh, has been founded following the Second World War, and there are different nations. We, as Arabs, are more close to each other than the Europeans. So I think, uh, frankly speaking, I, I, do not, I do not blame the Arab League or the League of the Arab Nations, uh, uh, but if the support uh, is there and the vision is there to uh, secure all the Arab countries, uh, then they ought to have been uh, represented in the United Nations or the Security Council. The Arab League uh, was not able to achieve such an objective. The African, the Africans uh, abolished uh, the predecessor of the African Union when uh, it was a failure in keeping the security and peace. Uh, the African Union nowadays is ready to take decisions. Uh, it interferes, uh, it calms things down and uh, helps uh, the fighting parties and so on and so forth. Uh, the EU Yes, uh, there are certain differences between the European nations. However, the EU has uh, 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 policies that are sound, and uh, uh, the European countries uh, benefited greatly from the EU. What benefit did we derive from the Arab League? This is a question that uh, we ought to pose. So, the 
responsibility ought to be shouldered by the Arab group in the United Nations uh, uh, because uh, we did nothing other groups without mentioning uh, any uh, countries uh, benefited from such uh, groups uh, under the umbrella of the United Nations. Uh, uh, hopefully th things will get better and uh, the obstacles will be dispensed with, uh, but I think that the uh, uh, Arab countries uh, must have done better. Uh, perhaps we should have emulated uh, the EU, ASEAN, the EU here in the Gulf uh, when uh, 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 the crisis uh, uh, surfaced. Uh, the GCC as an institution uh, has been obstructed. Things are better now, uh, things are natural now uh, and uh, positive, uh, but still at the time uh, this institution has been paralyzed, the GCC. Yes, you have uh, uh, touched upon natural uh, uh, catastrophes and disasters. Uh, perhaps uh, in the Arab world, uh, we have man-made catastrophes. We have 70% of the refugees. And uh, I participated in a conference, uh, and the researchers said 80% of the refugees across the world are in the Arab world. And uh, the Gulf support to the United Nations Secretariat is uh, sound and solid. Do you think that uh, we might arrive at uh, an Islamic or an Arab kind of uh, uh, institution to shoulder the responsibility and uh, to benefit all the people? I hope that the OIC uh, uh, might be able to do so, but still. Uh, uh, there are certain uh, differences uh, between the uh, uh, Islamic countries. Uh, there are deep differences. Uh, some uh, countries uh, uh, provide uh, assistance uh, to the United Nations, and some of them uh, provide uh, funds to the country that has been uh, in inflicted upon by a disaster or so on and so forth because uh, there are administrative fees and there are certain uh, cuts uh, from certain funds. So a number of countries resorted to direct assistance uh, uh, in Syria, in Yemen, in other countries. Uh, uh, some countries do not go through the United Nations. They do go directly to those countries uh, uh, to uh, provide uh, uh, assistance. Uh, uh, there is a huge polarization in the world nowadays, uh, and uh, superpowers are at loggerheads with each other. Uh, the United Nations, I think, will not be able to do anything. It will be paralyzed uh, soon, unfortunately. Uh, the last question from my side, and then we... Uh, uh, yes, just last point before you ask your question. Uh, I have not uh, touched upon the theme of dialogue. Uh, uh, His Highness, uh, the Father Emir, may God protect him since his uh, since, since he governed uh, the state of Qatar, he launched uh, the dialogue. Uh, following uh, the 11th of September in 2001 uh, and uh, targeting of the two t twin towers, uh, His uh, Highness, uh, the Father Emir, uh, uh, resorted to dialogue, not only between uh, uh, different countries, but interfaith dialogue as well, because he was uh, the first head of state, who one of the first uh, uh, heads of states who visited New York following the 11th of September uh, attacks. Uh, he reached there on the 28th of September. Uh, they called me, they said, uh, His Highness uh, is visiting Washington on, a, on an official visit. They wanted to postpone it because of uh, 
the circumstances at the time and the outrage uh, that uh, had spread in the USA. But uh, Mr. Bush was adamant uh, to keep the visit uh, on the specific date. So they said to me, you need to arrange the following. He will visit uh, the Cornell Hospital, His Highness uh, the uh, Father Emir. He shall visit those who had incurred uh, burns, deep burns, uh, and they are receiving treatment in uh, Cornell. Uh, and then, as you know, that area has been called uh, Ground Zero. And uh, then he will visit uh, the mayor of uh, New York, Mr. Giuliani, and then he will visit Mr. Kofi Annan, the United Nations Secretary General. But at that time, uh, things were boiling. Uh, but they gave me 24 hours only to arrange all these visits. The visit to Ground Zero, uh, the army, the American army uh, has been, uh, uh, had controlled the area at the time. Uh, so I, I, I t attempted to uh, uh, in, uh, correspond with Mr. Giuliani because at the time, uh, Giuliani perhaps was more important than the uh, U.S. president because of what took place in New York. So he was preoccupied, obviously. He, was, he had a lot on his plate, but the emir was coming, and there was no time. So I was told that Mr. Giuliani has moved to the western area of uh, Manhattan uh, on the Hudson River, or next to the Hudson River. But on the second day, he came to the United Nations to deliver a speech about terrorism. Uh, he wanted to say to the United Nations that you have to do something. I didn't have my seat. I stood. And when he left, Mr. Giuliani, I came, uh, I came to him, directly to him. And he said, please. Tell me uh, what's going on. So I said to him, I, I, pres I uh, introduced myself. I said, I'm uh, the state of Qatar's uh, permanent representative, uh, and I uh, uh, wanted to liaise with you, and uh, I couldn't. Uh, His Highness is coming to New York. His visit is very important. Uh, it's an official visit, so I hope that uh, uh, you will meet him or rather uh, you will uh, facilitate his visit to Ground Zero because the, the security was very tight. So he said, no problems, uh, I'll, I'll call you. So they've arranged everything. His Highness came uh, and visited New York and I breathed uh, a sigh of relief. And. Uh, Then he visited the, the area, and then we went home, and I was in the car that followed uh, His Highness's car, and uh, uh, the mayor's assistant called me. I said, everything okay? I said, okay. Uh, she said, uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, His Highness will visit Ground Zero. The question is, uh, will he wear the national clothes or will he be wearing a suit? So I said, I don't know. I need to ask him. I said, why? She said, uh, please, uh, the security is very tight. The American army is there. We have no authority over the army. So we fear that uh, the Arab Arabic dress, uh, especially as you know, the uh, perpetrators, the allegedly were Arab, so yes, uh, so we sat together and uh, uh, I said uh, to His Highness, uh, I was asked whether you will be wearing the kandura, the traditional garment, or will you be wearing a suit? So he looked at me, he said, there's nothing to do with them. I'll wear whatever I like to wear. 
I am here to sympathize with the Americans to visit them. They s I said to, to him that they want to know what you will be wearing. He said, why? So I explained to him. So he said to me, I will go wearing the traditional Arab dress. Tell them. So when I said to her that, she <laughs> was silent. I said, okay. On the next day, we moved uh, from the west side of the river uh, to ground zero and it was uh, surreal, it was scary uh, a huge area army uh, is everywhere uh, outrage in the air so I was kind of fearful but his highness was smart and uh, when he came to the site uh, and he had one of his sons and he held him with his hand he said Nasser bring a microphone for me so I I, I brought him a microphone thousands and thousands of uh, uh, servicemen and he at the time talked prudently and he had a, s uh, a standing ovation. They were applauding for a long time. He said to them, this has nothing to do with our religion. This is terrorism. And I brought my son here to show him th how these terrorists uh, carry out such acts and they kill people and they cause catastrophes and disasters. We are we do sympathize with you and uh, I came all the way to offer my condolences and may God protect you and thank you on the second day the New York Post had an article the it displayed uh, the map of Qatar and uh, a manche a small country with a big heart that was the title of the article the only Arab Muslim leader who had visited New York at that time. So, yes, it was unprecedented. Nobody has done what His Highness uh, has done. And uh, as you know, the atmosphere was electric, uh, uh, especially on the part of the American media. Uh, they were intimidating they were anti-Arab, anti-Muslim. So His Highness thought that these problems cannot be solved uh, y resorting to force. However, through genuine mediation and uh, uh, you uh, need to be respected. Otherwise, you won't be a solid uh, mediator. Second, The issue is, uh, is nothing to do with the governments uh, per se. However, uh, everyone uh, has to shoulder his responsibility, especially the religious leaders. The religious leaders must uh, be enlightened and must uh, convince uh, the children to be on the right track. Also, the civil societies, organizations, the intellectuals, uh, scientists, uh, and others uh, Everyone, as I said, uh, uh, governments uh, uh, cannot do their duties uh, without uh, the civil societies, organizations, and others. Uh, and that's why our institution has been uh, uh, formed. It is to do with soft power. Here I'm talking about the United Nations um, Civilization Alliance uh, uh, Institution. Here I'm talking about uh, 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 the collective responsibility. Uh, people usually blame the government. Uh, uh, I would say no. If there is uh, an extremist uh, religious uh, clerk who 
hijacks uh, certain youngsters and uh, 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 brainwashed them, uh, then it's nothing to do with the government. Uh, the, the, the Moroccan government, for example, uh, had a very nice program, and it is to do with uh, 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 cultivating the uh, uh, young uh, uh, religious leaders, uh, the imams, uh, and uh, uh, this program has been very successful and uh, uh, in order to eradicate uh, uh, the uh, uh, cancer. Sorry, I took much of your time. Sorry, uh, w we need to uh, open the floor. We have 10 minutes uh, left, or 15 minutes. Uh, uh, please, if you could introduce yourself uh, and ask the question. Microphone, please. Who is better with the microphone for interpretation purposes? In the name of God, the Most Christ, the Most Merciful, Khalid Al Abdullah Ziyara. I'm a media consultant. I uh, must talk about the period when uh, Mr. Uh, Nasser has headed the uh, Qatari mission and headed the Security Council and the General Assembly, because I was uh, a freelancer uh, to cover uh, his uh, activities uh, all the way through uh, on behalf of the uh, Qatari media agency. And I sincerely say that uh, he had left uh, good imprints, uh, he had a great legacy, and everybody has learned from uh, this gentleman when I usually would have certain interviews with others and ask them about uh, the Qatari role. They would mention this gentleman, and they would be very positive, uh, and uh, uh, indeed, uh, the living do uh, of uh, uh, Mr. Nasser was great, uh, and he had a farewell speech, uh, and everybody uh, was touched uh, uh, because uh, of that speech uh, at the end of uh, his service uh, at the uh, United Nations. Mr. Nasser, I'd like to say that uh, he revitalized uh, an item uh, that nobody has touched upon, and uh, he became the leader, not the Secretary General. He said that uh, the head of the United Nations uh, ought uh, uh, to uh, play a major role uh, in this regard, uh, i.e., the General Assembly's uh, uh, president uh, ha has uh, more jurisdictions uh, with the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, thank you. Any more questions? Please. Your Excellency, yes. If you can, please introduce Aspani. yourself and ask the question. Aspani, Aspani. Mm -hmm. uh, ambassador of Spain. Uh, so it's a pleasure uh, uh, to be here. And uh, also this extraordinary, I think it has been a very extraordinary uh, speech and uh, very uh, thoughtful about uh, the, the power of mediation and peace building at the United Nations and the extraordinary job that you made there under different uh, uh, dossiers, but now I would like to uh, touch upon the, your uh, very important uh, 
um, work uh, made as high representative for the Alliance of Civilizations, for the United Nations uh, Alliance of Civilizations, where I'm, I've seen it, how, I mean, you were uh, um, committed, fully committed uh, to the objectives of intercultural uh, dialogue and interreligious dialogue, and also the progress, the progress that uh, was made uh, during your tenure as a high representative. And uh, I would like uh, to ask you, and uh, I mean, I, I, I have seen it, but maybe, I mean, for, for, for this for, for this event, uh, it's, it would be interesting to, to know your, I mean, um, your b uh, position, beliefs on, on a dialogue of civilizations, intercultural dialogue, and peace building and mediation uh, areas where you have made a tremendous uh, work, uh, um, a lot of progress, and you were the first person that raised the issue of intercultural dialogue and, and mediation, uh, which is uh, a very important aspect for within mediation uh, to take into account the cultural issues, religious issues uh, in, in conflicts and on how to solve them, taking into account mm. Uh, these areas. Thank you so much, Ambassador Alfaro. Can you please just pass on the microphone to Ambassador Behandi? Uh, Ambassador Andrei Kuzmenko, Ukraine, Your Excellency, thank you so much for your extremely interesting, detailed uh, uh, presentation and uh, information you shared with us. Yes, indeed, we are in agreement that the United Nations, the core organization of this civilization, now is not meeting our requirements and expectations in terms of security. It was not uh, sufficient uh, attempts to stop Syria bloodshed. It was not uh, sufficient uh, attempts to stop Georgia bloodshed. Right now, you are absolutely correctly mentioned Ukraine. Thank you very much for this heartfelt position. Indeed, we think that uh, the General Assembly and the Special Security Council uh, they should be reformed according to the reality of the modern world. For example, uh, among the reasons uh, is just simple bypassing in uh, 1991 uh, the responsibility of the former Soviet Union to the Russia. And still now uh, in the Charter of the United Nations, uh, we have Soviet Union at the Article 24, if I'm not mistaken, but not Russia. It should be set forth. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much, Ambassador. We expect your assistance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We'll come back to Your Excellency. Okay. Shukran. هل أنت تتابع الترجمة؟ نعم نعم لدينا ترجمة فوري. Thank you, uh, Khalid. You have uh, uh, touched upon my career. Uh, if you go back uh, to the powers of the General Assembly's uh, President, the powers uh, are confined to one year. And uh, the President of the General Assembly has uh, indeed powers. Uh, and uh, if he doesn't take uh, his responsibilities uh, seriously, then one year would elapse and another would come. There were attempts uh, to add another year for the tenure of the General Assembly's President. As you know, the General Secretary has five years, uh, but the General Assembly has only one year. Uh, I had a lot of ideas, and we used to work uh, day in, day out, 24-7. Uh, uh, and this is the underbelly of uh, the work of the General Assembly's uh, president, i.e. the tenure. He's speaking in English now. Marhaban Bika. Marhaban Biki Mujaddadan. Her Excellency uh, Blaine, the ambassador of Spain, is uh, a colleague, uh, and I know her years ago. And uh, the lady worked at the foreign ministry of Spain, and she was uh, responsible on on communicating with us uh, at uh, the office of the high 
Commissioner of uh, the Civilizations uh, Alliance, and I'd like to thank you for your good work uh, and good efforts. Uh, just uh, for you to know, the idea behind uh, uh, this uh, Civilization Alliance came from Spain following the 11th of September's uh, 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 events. Uh, the Prime Minister of Spain came to the Onga and uh, he said that the world soon shall face not military wars but hatred wa wars and bigotry wars, uh, intolerance uh, wars. Uh, and uh, this is uh, more dangerous than the military showdown or the, the military wars because the military wars end. However, the hatred wars continue and the victims of such wars are innocent usually. So I recommend the United Nations to accept my idea to have a United Nations organization that relies on soft power through the Alliance of Civilizations. And indeed, uh, we looked at this matter uh, seriously, floated by uh, the Prime Minister of Spain, and uh, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan was mandated to uh, 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 formulate or fa to, 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 f to establish uh, 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 this uh, organization. And uh, uh, it, it gives me a pleasure to say that amongst the 20 persons uh, of uh, the founding personalities was Her Highness Sheikh Hamouz. Uh, Kofi Annan uh, had uh, uh, contacted her. Kofi Annan wanted to uh, wanted Her Highness uh, Sheikh Hamouz to be a member of the uh, founding committee of uh, this organization. He called me and he said, uh, uh, "Please uh, uh, tell." Her Highness and Her Highness uh, uh, agreed to the uh, idea and she worked uh, relentlessly uh, so that uh, the uh, establishment of uh, this organization uh, uh, has been swift. Indeed, uh, the objectives uh, of uh, uh, this organization, as I said, uh, uh, is to do with dialogue, mediation, uh, the role of religious leaders, uh, civil society organizations, scientists, uh, universities, uh, think tanks, uh, and uh, attaching importance to youth, to the youth, uh, because the youth uh, uh, do represent, obviously, the future generation, and uh, they represent uh, uh, the biggest sector amongst the inhabitants uh, of a number of countries. Uh, when I headed uh, the organization, uh, I looked at the objectives and I said to myself that we need to add further objectives. So I introduced sports, because sports is very important uh, in the soft power domain. I also added art and the role of businessmen and women. When there is prosperity, they become richer. And when there is war, they become kind of uh, poorer. But at the same time, they need to uh, provide funds uh, to uh, the disaster-stricken countries. Uh, we wanted to allocate a budget. I actually uh, touched upon the role of uh, religious leaders. Why? A, a, city, a, a city in the middle of Italy, and it is an ancient city, I uh, visited the mayor over there, and uh, he said to me, have you visited the St. Saint Francis Church? He said, this religious man, Francis, St. Francis, if you read about uh, his life, he was uh, an advocate of peace since the 11th century. And uh, the indication is as follows. You should visit uh, his church, and we will send an interpreter with you. 
I looked at the church and uh, nothing has attracted my attention. The interpreter said, has anything attracted your attention? I looked left, right, up, down and said no. He said, look to your right hand side. Look at this uh, uh, painting. There is an Islamic calligraphy. To the left, there is a Jewish calligraphy. He said this took place in the 11th uh, century. When he built this church, uh, he said, I need uh, a Jew, an architect, and a Muslim architect, uh, uh, because this is uh, a place of worship and uh, the Abrahamic monotheistic uh, religions uh, ought to be represented in this church. So indeed, there are Jewish inscriptions and Muslim inscriptions in that church. So I thought about that. Uh, people used to talk about uh, tolerance, respect, and so on and so forth. But nowadays, we have uh, the social media dilemma. The social media plays a negative role in disseminating hatred uh, and uh, religious contempt, bigotry. So thank you so much. Good to see you. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, The situation in your country is dire, is difficult. I have uh, alluded to the reform of the United Nations and the role of the Security Council in promoting human rights and achieving stability, peace and security all across the globe, not only in the Ukraine. I hope that uh, you will enjoy peace in your country, and I think uh, the language of dialogue uh, uh, must see light. Unfortunately, the Security Council is crippled, is paralyzed because of the veto. Uh, I hope you will live in peace and security. Thank you. We are uh, finishing this uh, lecture, I would like to thank His Excellency and I would like to thank you all uh, for your presence. As I said, uh, this is uh, a part of a bigger uh, project uh, to preserve the Qatari memory in mediation. So this is the first uh, lecture and uh, uh, we shall uh, uh, host experts, diplomats and others uh, in the future, perhaps uh, every month, uh, we would have a lecture. Yet uh, they, they, they are anonymous now. His Excellency Sheikh Ab Abdullah bin Nasser is with us and he is uh, a great leader. We are honored, yes. His Excellency Abdullah bin Aida Slaiti, also a leader, and he uh, 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 worked with me at the United Nations and uh, he is uh, a personality that uh, is towering. Yes, expect a letter from us then. Thank you all. And uh, good night.